Hey up! My name's Victoria and I'm pleased to welcome you to a brilliant new autumn and winter season at the LBT. This autumn we've got some great drama for you. Pilot Theatre are bringing their fantastic contemporary version of a classic tragedy, Antigone. Numberless wonders, terrible wonders walk the earth, but none are the match for man. The people, they're tougher than you think. They'll see the light soon enough. It will happen. It's going to happen. We've also got local passion and hearts and history in the brand new play by Mick Martin, England Arise. England Arise is taken from the entirely true story of two guys, Arthur Gardner, who was a, uh, a dyer's labourer uh, in Huddersfield in 1914, and he was a, a self-educated product of the Socialist Sunday schools around here at this time. And basically he was passionately uh, against the First World War. So uh, in England arises a story of the anti-war movement in Huddersfield, which Huddersfield was a real centre of the anti-war movement in the 1914-1916 period. And it's all taken from a book, Comrades in Conscience, by a chap called Cyril Pierce, who is a Huddersfield historian who uh, basically interviewed Arthur Gardner when he was an old man in about 1968 or 9. And, and found out about the story, because it's, it's the story that's largely been airbrushed out of history. A brave stand. Um, so obviously with the centenary coming along, we thought, what a wonderful moment to tell an actual alternative story of the First World War, which is set entirely on the home front and entirely actually about political opposition to the war. And it's very funny. And if you want an absolutely riotous, funny night out of the theatre, you can't miss She Stoops to Conquer by Northern Broadsides. It's got big frocks and big wigs, as well as great big laughs. Theatre is brilliant for people of any age, but it's a particular joy when children come to theatre for the first time. And we've got some great family shows on for you. Well-loved stories like The Pied Piper, but also new experiences too. And we've got a brand new story, Inside Out, by one of our resident companies, Telltale Hearts, all about the fun of dressing up. And it's for two to six year olds, their families, their carers, grandparents, and it's, an, it's a highly interactive show. It's about a brother and a sister, an older brother who likes things to be just so, nice and ordered and put away and tidy, and his younger sister who loves to mess things up. Telltale Hearts is a very different experience from a lot of other children's theatre companies and it's because we make work that is highly interactive, participatory and really understands the developmental stage of the children that are there at the show, whilst at the same time making work that works on a number of levels and should engage the parent as much as it does the child. So it helps to facilitate a really magical shared experience together. So we don't expect your children to sit still in the show. So please don't feel that you can only bring your child if they sit absolutely still. We want them to be jiggling about. Since I've been at the LBT, I've become a real fan of dance. And this season we've got two beautiful performances for you. The first one by James Cousins is something I absolutely fell in love with when I saw it at the Edinburgh Festival and I'm sure that you will too. The other piece, Broken by Motion House, which we have on in January, is really frenetic, energetic, athletic, and has got an extraordinary set. We're also 
also really pleased to have back the fantastic Young Opera Venture. In terms of the audience that we'd like to meet and we'd like to reach, it's actually people who've never seen an opera before. Those are our, our target audience. Uh, Magic Flute uh, was written by Mozart, uh, and even if you're not sure who Mozart was, it's, you, you probably could hum a lot of his music. Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a very famous composer, um, and I dare say you know quite a lot of his, uh, quite a lot of his tunes. The magic flute, on the other hand, is uh, actually what they used to call a zingspiel. They used to call a zingspiel. It means that uh, you have songs and arias and scenes where everyone's singing together, but also the scenes are linked by dialogue. So we sort of break out of singing and we actually just we act and we talk to each other. Um, it's, it's full of fantasies. There's magical queens, uh, magical ladies, um, lots of. Uh, lots of imagery and sort of otherworldliness as well, which is actually written into the opera. Uh, and of course, it's what we're doing as well as part of our set. So uh, yeah, I implore you. It's, uh, it's not a kid's story, but it's, it's absolutely fine. You know, children will understand it and they'll, they'll delight in the, in the fantasy of it all uh, and the otherworldliness of it all. But adults as well, there's, there's plenty for you to feast your eyes on and your ears on. So uh, I implore you to come. We'd like LBT to be a place where you can come and celebrate at any time during the year. So at Halloween you could bring little ones along to see the great puppet performance Little Frankenstein. Or you could take a walk around the town centre for the scary ghost walk that is Shuddersfield. And at the winter solstice we've got a great music night with Claire Mooney who is just a big heart on a stick. Festive Sound Women is a, a brilliant uh, musical, spoken word, comic uh, extravaganza of women's entertainment. It's for emerging and uh, some well-established women entertainers. The audience is always mixed and we welcome anybody, truly any age, can come to, uh, to Sound Women. And it's, uh, it's kind of to reflect on the year we've just had and to celebrate the year we're, we're going into. But it's, uh, it's good fun and there's a free raffle. There are 10 gifts for everybody um, who buys a ticket, you may win the raffle, and I'm telling you, it's a really good gift. Theatre is a place to share great passions, and this season we're trying something new with film and looking at our passion for celluloid. We're launching a new season of Classics on Celluloid. That's the title that we're giving to it. The choices that we made were based on the casts, uh, the writers, the original source material, and the directors. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern Are Dead um, is, a, is a highly unusual play because it's based on two minor characters in Hamlet who come to the fore. So all the background of Hamlet is going on in the background, but you've got these two idiots bumbling around, all these murders and corpses everywhere, and they're kind of going, oh, what's going on here? And wow, how can this be happening? And you see the mechanics and the dynamics of Hamlet through their eyes. And then under Milkwood, because it's the centenary of Dylan Thomas, many people said it's a film that couldn't be made, but uh, Andrew Sinclair proved them wrong. And if you like a laugh, our comedy season is like a who's who in comedy. We've got John Shuttleworth, Jason Byrne, Dave Spikey, Joe Caulfield and Ruby Wax doing a great theatre show. And if you like comedy, you can come for a brilliant night out at Christmas to our Comedy Cellar Christmas specials. For the family at the festive season, we've got a traditional pantomime, Jack and the Beanstalk, in the new year. And over Christmas, we'll be working with Tutti Frutti on the lovely The Boy Who Cried Wolf. I, was a child. I, grew, I grew up on the Welsh border in a smallish village surrounded by sheep and mountains. And actually, a lot of my childhood, though at first was really lovely, I started to think, this is a very small world I'm in. The Boy Who Cried Wolf, as a story, I, I, I started to think about it actually because it comes across as quite finger wagging, but I kind of thought maybe this is a story about a boy who wants to see a bigger side of the world. And so that's where it started. So that's the story we're telling. Um, it's funny, entertaining, got lots of music in it. The boy goes up the mountain three times, and each time is very different. Uh, when I asked my kids what, what I should say about this show, they said, tell them about the dancing sheep. It's got dancing sheep in, they sing as well. The sheep are funny. In fact, although it's called the boy who cried wolf, uh, he spends more time with his sheep than he does with the wolf. And the, wolf, and the sheep are hilarious. They won't do a thing that he wants him to do.
If you've never been here before, I look forward to meeting you and showing off our great theatre. And if you have been here before, welcome back. It's going to be a great autumn.